Opa, distorted, all right. Some of my original music for a change. <coughs> Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Welcome to video number two in our... Are these three time signatures together or are you just happy to see me? Trilogy. And today we'll have Puppet on Strings from the album A Way Out by my own beloved Distorted Harmony. I'm specifically excited about these two next ones because, are you sitting? The host is not 4-4. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. Anyway, we yet again have a host and two guests. This video is also based on the guest versus host concept from this video. So if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Second, go do your homework. Okay, back to the song. The host might be a bit tricky to catch at the beginning, but let's take a listen. The host here is played by the keys, and it's in 6-4. Luckily, we have a full round of it played before the guests appear. <laughs> Math time! In a 6-4 bar, we have 12 eighth notes. In four of those 6-4 bars, we have 48 eighth notes. Remember that. Okay, guest number one. The first guest is played by the drums as this marching snare drum vibe thing. Try and count it out. Any guesses? Well, it's 5-8, divided into 2 and 3. This phrase in 5 has two different endings, but it's a very minor detail. Moving on. Back to math again. If we have 48 eighth notes to fill up, and we have a phrase in 5, we can fit 9 full phrases, which would give us 45, and we're left with 3 more till the end, which are played as a short fill. This 5-8 pattern takes a lot of attention, huh? It's hard to count the 6-4 once the drums are in. And rightfully so. The drums have unproportionately more power when it comes to counting, obviously. And when the guest is played on the drums, it's very hard to ignore. All right, we're moving fast. I like it. Guest number two. The second guest is a bit more subtle, and it's played by the guitar. It goes something like this. This line is a 9-8, divided into three groups of three. Rhythmically, these three groups are identical, which means that the melodic aspect of it is what leads me to group these into a bigger 9 group and not to a 6 or a 12. Listen to the high note. Ah, 
the lower notes change according to the chords dictated by the host. Our total is still 48 eighth notes, and our new group is 9. So, kind of the opposite of guest number 1, we can fit 5 full phrases of 9, and we, again, have 3 beats left to fill up. In this case, these 3 beats are just silence. Because silence is also music. Well, it, it, it is, but you just don't have to say it that way. Never mind. But yeah, after 5 repeats of 9, we have a 3 beat gap. So, should we do a final run through? Of course we will. While he's doing all his uh, fancy drawings, I'll just add that the ending of this part does have an extra quarter note, so the last bar is actually a 7-4. But it's just an added break that serves as a cool way to move to the next section of the song. I love this example. I mean, yeah, I was part of the writing process, but the parts written by the other guys blend so well together, you can barely notice all of these numbers going around. Making these polyrhythms sound simple and smooth, and not like an exercise, is a very hard thing to do. And I'm always happy to find new ways to incorporate this in my own music, and of course finding other artists that do so as well. Am I shamelessly plugging my own band? Yeah, totally. Go listen to Distorted Harmony, we're good, I swear. Thank you very much for watching. 